Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the east of England, um, around the world. Thank you for passing by. Thank, thank my subscribers for subscribing and for liking and your comments. And anybody who's passing by for the first time, it would be nice if you subscribed or put the thumbs up if you agree with my um, approach on things. Most of the time I just give my opinion on different news items and um, yeah. Sometimes people agree, sometimes people don't. But today I wanted to talk about the 16-year-old, I know he's under 18, who was given a life sentence. And I'm talking about him only because I live in Bedfordshire and this boy was from Luton. So, you know, I wanted to kind of touch on it because, you know, it's kind of close to home, so to speak. Sometimes we see things on the news and when they're in a different country or a different place, we don't really pay much attention. But when something is on your own turf, you can't, your ears prick up because it's close to home. Now, what I wanted to talk about is whether or not life imprisonment was appropriate for a child under 18 or whether it's disproportionate depend, because he's not as culpable as an adult. So um, I've kind of had my own thoughts on it and I'll interject, but I looked at um, an article from Human Rights Watch that tackled this situation in 2019. So I'm going to read some of their stuff and I'm going to throw in some of what I think, because a lot of times when we think about children, they're children for a reason. They're protected for a reason. They can't buy alcohol for a reason. They can't sign contracts for a reason. And that's because their um, prefrontal cortex is not as matured or as developed as an adult. They are likely to be impulsive. They are likely to lose control. So should they be treated as an adult in the criminal system? And when you think also that, you know, I do a lot of um, videos about adverse childhood experiences, what they call ACEs, where the way you are brought up can affect the way you manage your lives as an adult. So the decisions and choices you make. Now, I'm, I could consider myself a victim of adverse childhood experiences, but I believe my generation were much more resilient were much more disciplined. And so our attitude was totally different. The young people today seem to be more fragile. They, they lack the discipline because the government says you cannot discipline your child. And I'm not talking about severe discipline and beating up your child or abusing your child. But sometimes um, this engaging talking back and talking forward to a child, there, there needs to be some other way of um, making a child understand without going to lengths. But the thing is, I think when, when, uh, when the government is talking about engaging a child and rationalising and reasoning with them to get through so you don't have to discipline them, I think they're talking about healthy children coming from healthy families. I don't think they are thinking about children who are coming from homes where there are drug addicts, homes where there is domestic abuse, homes where they're being abused or mistreated. You know, I don't think the government, when they make that, um, that policy um, to abolish corporal, corporate punishment or any kind of discipline with a child, that they're taking into consideration the upbringing of the child, the background of the child. And so now we have children growing up who are making adult decisions and they're not adults. They're being treated as adults because you're engaging and you're talking to them on one-to-one. -one. There used to be something called adult-child relationship, adult-adult relationship, and I forget what the third one was, but there's three. But what's happening is, is that the adult-child relationship has kind of gone out of the window. And it's almost like it's an adult-adult relationship. 
And when I was in my shop the other day, I heard this woman, uh, well, a mother, talking to her child and reasoning with her child as though that child was an adult. It's a child. And then you have children, when they do speak out, they're called precocious and they're called cheeky or fiercely or whatever. And you have to wonder, how does that come about? Where is, how do you make difference? How do you make a difference between people who have different experiences? One, one size doesn't fit all. So how can you make a rule for all children and all parents when each parent and each child's lived experience is totally different? But that is what's happening. And when you see a child murder another child, which is the case in this, has any thought gone to as to whether what the background is of that child, of either children? I know there was a grudge, but normally if there's a grudge, you, you kind of stop talking to the person, you walk away, you don't arm yourself with a knife and decide to stab someone. They reckon that impulse when... Um, young people, well, not young people, anybody that acts on impulse, which is what sometimes happens in this stabbing incident, is that they don't, they react without thinking. Whether it's stress, stress is, uh, um, stress is one of the culminating factors why people act on impulse and don't think properly. Alcohol, drugs, was he screened for alcohol, drugs, blood sugar, that can help, that can kind of distort your reasoning and your, your reaction and make you act impulsively. There are a lot of things that can make an individual, whether it's an adult or a child, to act impulsively. The biggest thing is ego. You know, a lot of young people and even adults are talking about your mother, your father, your sister, your this, cussing out pe people who they know they love, people who they know they respect, and they're disrespecting close relatives and attacking them as well and sometimes ego the defense of your ego is what makes people lash out but when the criminal system is um, putting a sentence on a child they're not thinking of any of the culminating factors they're just saying this behavior cannot go on this child has to be an example to other ch children so that they don't do it. But if it's the circumstances that are propelling um, young men or teenagers to murder others or behave in an inappropriate way, how can setting an example be the answer? There has to be another answer. These children who are behaving in such an abominable way, their, their background needs to be researched and looked into and see what the link is. So many young people are in the criminal system and they're not being evaluated or assessed for their upbringing. At least I don't think so. Otherwise, there'd be mitigating circumstances. They wouldn't get be given a life sentence because there's no room for that child to change. I mean, we all change as we grow up. I'm not the same person I was when I was 16. So, but when you're putting someone into the prison system, in the prison system, you're not giving them an opportunity to change your habits or change bad habits or get a grip and think I did something wrong and self-reflect and, you know, that kind of thing. You're just thrown away to the system what they call the throwaway child. And Nelson Mandela actually said something about the, the way people treat children gives, uh, gives you an insight to the soul of those people. Because the children are our future. We need to be facilitating and helping them and supporting them. And so many children are not being raised right. Not because... Sometimes it's because no parent has a handbook. Nobody knows how to raise children. The only thing is that if you're a stable parent and you've been raised with love yourself, you will know how to show love and stability for your child. 
The majority of parents these days are not stable. They haven't grown up in a loving environment. And so how can they raise stable children? And it becomes a vicious cycle. Now, an Asian boy is dead. The murderer, who's also Asian, is, is spending his life in prison. You know, it's, it's so sad, really. So sad, you, you know, that people deal with grudges through violence. And it's happening more and more because we've been hearing about the increase of murders in Jamaica. And most of that is because of a grudge. What happened to other ways of communication? Regardless of your education, you should be able to communicate on the level of the person that you're communicating with. Otherwise, don't get involved. If you're not at that person's level and you can't communicate effectively or at the same level of the person, don't have an argument with them. Just step back, bow your head down and walk away. What's that saying? He who walks away lives to see another day. You know, don't challenge if you don't feel as though you are on par because when you challenge people who you feel are above you or who you feel are more intelligent than you, you end up feeling insecure, you and your ego gets bruised and you're likely to attack in a way you wouldn't if it was somebody on your level who you could reason with in a different way and discuss it and uncover the underlying problem. So, got that off of my chest. I just wanted to read something from um, the Human Rights Watch. It, it was in um, 2019, and Human Rights it is in America, but it is still relevant to us. Oh, I've got all my things all mixed up. But anyway, it says, Studies have shown that children's brains are not fully developed. The prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for temporal organisation of behaviour, speech and reasoning, continues to develop into early adulthood. Children's underdeveloped brains and proclivity for impetuous decision-making is why we do not allow children to vote, enter into contracts, work in certain industries, get married, join the military, or use alcohol or tobacco products. These policies recognize that children are impulsive, immature, and lack solid decision-making abilities until they reach adulthood. The vast, it continues, the vast majority of children involved in the criminal justice system are contending with early childhood trauma and unmitigated adverse childhood experiences, ACEs, including psychological, physical and or sexual abuse, witnessing domestic violence, living with family members who are substance abusers, suffer from mental illness or suicidal ideation or are incarcerated. American studies, which are probably not dissimilar to the UK studies, have shown that, the, that approximately 90% of children in the juvenile justice system have experienced at least two adverse childhood experiences and 20% of boys and 45% of girls have experienced at least five adverse childhood experiences. For children sentenced to life in prison, nearly 80% of them reported witnessing violence in their home, 50% were physically abused, and 20% were sexually abused during their life. However, the justice system rarely recognises or understands the connection between children who have committed a criminal act and their previous exposure to trauma. I couldn't have put it a better way. Human Rights Watch have proposed a common sense reform 
that properly balances protecting public safety with the need to treat children differently from adults in the criminal justice system. Appropriate discretion to judges when sentencing children and refocus sentencing considerations to better account for a child's background and exposure to early childhood trauma. They should guarantee children the opportunity for sentencing review after a reasonable point in their incarceration. So, to sum it up, so whilst the criminal system will find the young murderer's behaviour unacceptable and counterproductive, this is me, I am not sure dishing out life sentences will encourage young people to take a different path. What does it do? What it does do is provide a scapegoat and leave those young teenagers who have psychological problems to continue to act on impulse and out of a reaction to their adverse lived experiences. While my heart goes out to the family of 16-year-old Hamza Hussein, who was stabbed to death, is a life sentence too harsh for his murderer, who is also technically a child because he's under 18 years old. The one area where we do not treat non-emancipated children different, differently than adults is our criminal justice system, where we seem to be too eager to discard the child's status. And that's all I've got to say for now. Bye-bye.